you have the Creality K1 or the K1 Max and you want to use a different slicer than Creality Print on your Creality K1. But which one? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about Bamboo Studio. Can you use this slicer based on Prusa Slicer for your Creality K1? And also showing the features that it has for your Creality K1 right here on Zachary's 3D Prints. Hey, Zach here. Welcome to this video. Yeah, Bamboo Studio. Bamboo Studio is an amazing slicer. I also use it for my Bamboo Labs P1S with AMS. But can you also add the K1 to this slicer? Well, I'll show you exactly how you can do it and also the basic features in this slicer software. So, uh, hey, if you're not subscribed, subscribe and uh, let's dive right in. So this is Bamboo Studio, welcome. If you don't have this slicer yet, check out the link in the description of this video so that you can download this slicer software, set it all up, also register for it so that you can use the full potential of this slicer software. We are going to prepare. Of course, since I have a Bamboo Labs P1S, I already have it selected here. But how to add the Creality K1? We are going to click on this little sprocket this little gear and then you will see printer selection you scroll a little bit down and you will find the creality 3d printers then you scroll all the way to the bottom and here you have the creality k1 and the k1 max so we are going to select the 0.4 millimeter nozzle and we click on confirm so this is the build plate you can use your mouse wheel to move it from the left to the right and from the back to the front something like that you can use the left mouse button to you know twist and turn this build plate around so on the left side the creality k1 0.4 millimeter nozzle if we click on connection what is going to happen yeah here we have the option octoprint duet flash air astrobox repeteer mks it's not in here so we cannot send files directly over to the printer we are going to save it to our folder and then from the folder we are going to use the web version but that i will show a little bit later now down here we have all the colors of the filament from if you have a bamboo labs 3d printer then they are there so this part we cannot use for the filament types and switching from pla to PEG or abs or maybe some other filament types that you want to use on your Creality K1, you need to go inside of here by the little sprocket. You click on it, and here we have our Creality K1, also Creality and the six, and different other ones. Make sure to click on all so that everything is selected, and you click on confirm. So once that is done, it's going to reload. And now for slot number one, that is the one that is going to be used. You click on the drop down, and now you have generic ABS, generic ASA, generic pet g generic pla and generic tpu so in this case uh, we are going to use the pla you can also switch over to pet g or abs or any other filaments that you want to use on your creality k1 then we have here the process global object advanced this is how you can change it this is for the objects if you add models to the build plate they will be here but you will see that a little bit later so we are going to global this is a profile you have the 0.16 optimal creality k1 0.4 nozzle you have a standard and you have also a draft so we are putting it on 0.2 or 0.20 layer height 0.2 line width everything is already pre-selected if you want to make some changes it is all possible here when it comes to the quality the strength so here you can change the walls like four or three in, in the standard it's it's on three but you can always increase it or going for less if you want to. You have different kind of top surface patterns that where you can choose from. But in this video, we are going to keep it simple. The infill you can find right over here. It is at grid, but you can always change it to a different kind of infill pattern. The infill density you can find right over here. And rest, I, I never really touch that much. Speed, speed you find right over here, initial layer height. So the first layer that is going to be printed is 50 millimeters per second. It is slow, but it is your first layer. And after that, other layers, speed 200 millimeters, inner walls 300, small parameters 50% millimeters per second off the percentage and so on and so on. 
everything is already in there. Support materials, depending on which kind of model you are going to print, a calibration cube, you don't need to have any supports. If you are going for a nice enemy figurine, then of course, in some parts, support is needed. Since it is disabled, everything is grayed out. If you click on it, you can choose what you want. Underneath support, you will find raft. Raft is this little thing where the print is going to be print on top of it. Filament for supports. Advanced support wall loops here, here you can change everything you want and you have others here is the bad adhesion skirt loops at this moment is zero you have brim it is standing on auto so meaning if it is too small for printing on the build plate it is automatically going to give you a auto brim prime tower since we are printing with a single color we don't need to have any prime tower maybe in the future it's going to be changed and here also some other cool little things. If you want to make some changes, also that is possible. You click on here, click to edit preset. Here you find all the settings, all the things you need. Let's go over it. The G-code flavor in this case, it is Clipper. Use firmware retraction. Everything is already pre-filled in. We are going to use it. So here you see everything you need, extruder, direct drive and also some notes. So uh, we are going to add a model to the build plate and let's see what it does. Now we are going to add a model to the build plate. Take those two models, let's import it. So here, load these files as a single object with multiple parts. We are not going to do that, no. When those two models are imported into the slicer, make sure then to click on arrange all objects and then click on arrange. So why do, did I choose for separate models? Because now I can select this one and I can move this one around. Maybe I want to have it standing like this, you know, so outer range and now everything is as it's supposed to. So let's go over here. We can add another build plate. If we click on, on here, we can say like we drag this one to here. So th this is very handy if you are going to print big projects and you are printing multiple parts on one build plate. You can add a second build plate, add there more parts and slice them plate by plate and then sending it over to the printer and then you have a sort of batch production running. So that is cool, I guess. Everything is on one build plate. I don't see any reason why I would need multiple build plates for this. This is auto orient. It is going to automatically make sure that everything is as it's supposed to. Variable layer height, something like that is possible within this slicer as well. But in my case, we are going just for a standard. You can, if you click on it, you can move the models around. You can also use it like this. I don't know why you would do something like that. You can also rotate it if you want to. These are the bigger steps like 45 degree, 90 degree angle or 180. But if you are going outside, you can move it a little bit better so that you have a more precise direction to go for the orientation. If you have the model selected and you want to say like, hey, I want to scale it, here's the possibility to do that. I always go for this option. If I want to print it at 125%, then uh, everything goes along because I have selected uniform scale. Very important or else you will get something that doesn't look nice at all. Let's uh, give it a little example. Uh, let's say like uh, 150%. And uh, she, uh, th this character is uh, pretty small. Maybe, maybe you like it. I don't know. I mean, everybody has a choice, you know. You can also split models here. So uh, if you click on it, you can cut it into smaller parts as well. It is just working. So you have two options for splitting the models in smaller parts, uh, planar. So meaning in one clean cut or in dovetail. And then it looks like this so that you can shove the parts together as a dovetail you have here different kind of settings to play with i'm not going to deep dive too much in it but it's something for maybe a future video so we have also support paintings so if you click on it you can uh, it is there it is there as you can see there's a little dot you can uh, increase it like that and it's way bigger and you can say like okay i want to have supports over there you get here a little warning sign Support enforcers are used, but support is not enabled. Please enable support. Then we have here also seam painting. You can choose exactly where you want to have all the seams. The seam in a 3D printed part or model is where the nozzle stops printing and starts a new layer. That is what a seam basically is. Uh, we have also some text shaping. 
that's not for now. We are going to talk about it sometime else. And then we have also color painting. It's something that is not yet available on the Creality K1. Maybe in the future with the CFS from Creality, this is also going to be available as well. And then here, assembly view. I never touched that before. But uh, let's uh, go to the supports. Let's enable supports. Threshold angle. At this moment, it's at 30%. Let's uh, do some slicing and see what happens. So now the model is all sliced. It has some auto supports, the normal version. These are the square ones. And since I don't want to have them, we are going to select it into three. You have the three auto or the three manual. So we are going for the auto and uh, we slice it again. So this is how the three supports look like. Very nice, very clean. It auto generates because the angle at this moment is 30 degrees. Everything is supported and is looking nice. Now we are going to say print. It is grayed out. So we click on here. We export g-code file export and now here we are going to my desktop reality k1 and here i'm going to save it so and there you go a model sliced in bamboo studio let's uh, start the print and let's see how this model looks like and so if you want to upload the model to your Creality K1 or K1 Max, then you are going to the web address that you can find on the 3D printer under the head of settings and network. There you find your IP address. And once you enter this in into your browser, you will get the page right over here. Adding the model, I click on import. I go to the folder on my desktop, which I have called the K1 G codes and there I will take this model right over here and click on open. So here you will see also that it is uploading to the internal storage of the Creality K1 and there it is. So now we click on the model and we click on start printing. So and as you can see right over here you have a nice PNG image so that you know exactly what you are going to print. So uh, let's print this model and uh, check how the model looks like. And here it is all finished. A very beautiful model, a nice bust printed in Polymaker PLA light purple. It is looking nice. Everything is printed on the Creality K1 using Bamboo Studio. Of course, there are some things that you always can change, but before you do that, make a little copy of the existing profile, play around, and then try out what works the best. Especially with supports, it is a function that you can turn on or turn off and uh, see how nice your models, your printed parts are coming out of your Creality K1 using bamboo studio hey if you like this video hit the uh, thumbs up if you're not subscribed subscribe and let me know in the comments what do you think about using bamboo studio for your creality k1 let me know in the comments hey and maybe you can also check out this amazing video right over here helping you further within 3d printing right here